Hey everybody, Paul here. Doing some musings today about the NPN transistor to gain greater understanding. I've got set up on the breadboard here a two transistor circuit. You can find the schematic all over the internet. I'm putting links in the descriptions to all this stuff. Um, this is set up for a AND or NAND circuit. Right now I've got it set up for an AND circuit with two momentary push button switches back here. You can see pushing either of them individually is doing nothing and they're both in the open position. With these push button switches, when they're in the open position, the circuit is off because it's not making a full connection and connecting voltage to ground. However, when I press both at the same time, the LED light goes on. So that's our AND circuit. Now why is that? Well, we've got voltage in going to the collector on transistor 1. Both bases are going to an input on the momentary switch, and then the other connection on the switch are going to voltage in on each switch. The emitter of transistor 1 is connecting to the collector on transistor 2 and the emitter on transistor 2 is interfacing with the LED um, just behind or sorry just ahead of this 4.7 ohm resistor. So the LED is going to ground and its anode or positive lead is interfacing with the emitter on transistor 2. So the LED is going to ground, but it's not getting any voltage through these transistors because transistors do act like a uh, switch. And because these momentary switches in the back are not um, activated both at the same time, our circuit is open or it's off. You might think of it as off. But when we press both of these and close the circuit, the light goes on. Okay, so that is an AND circuit. Now let's make a NAND out of this. All right, so I've connected transistor 2's emitter to ground, and we've moved the LED up to transistor 1's collector, and just behind that, we're interfacing that with the 4.7 ohm resistor. We've just moved it over um, on top here. And you can see that the light is on right now, even though both switches are in the open position. Well, why is that? Because you'd, you'd say, well, the circuit's not totally complete. In this case, it doesn't matter because we've got the LED connected to ground and voltage in is coming in via this uh, resistor. So this LED has a complete circuit right now. The push button switches and the transistors don't have a complete circuit but the LED does. And if we press one of these buttons individually, the light stays on. Nothing changes. And it wouldn't change because both of those um, bases on the transistors would need to be on, would need to be closed for the circuit to be on. Now, let's press both of these at the same time and notice that the light goes off. So that's a NAND or not AND circuit. Okay, well, why is that happening? Because when we activate both of those switches now, what's happening is that the voltage or current is running all to ground from here, from the uh, transistors collector number one here, it's running through the momentary switches, through transistor 2's emitter to ground, and it's not giving any current to the LED. I'll do that again. All that voltage right now is running to ground, right through from the top of the circuit, right out through transistor 2's emitter, with nothing provided for the LED. So what we've got here now are five transistors making what's known as an exclusive OR or XOR gate. And I'm going to be checking out the schematic here with you in a minute. But I just want to show you it's five transistors, still have two momentary switches back here. 
And this is only going to be activated when any one of these switches is in the closed position. So if I hit that, you can see the light comes on. That switch, the light comes on. If I hit them both, the light is not going to go on. So that's what's known as the exclusive OR. So I built that five transistor exclusive OR circuit based on this schematic by Gert Nutterts. He's in Belgium. Um, he's a blogger. He's building an eight or 12 bit computer, I'm putting links to in the description to his blog posts about his various um, circuit diagrams. Very interesting. And we've got Q1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 representing the NPN transistors and the different resistors. And in his blog post, he makes a note that Q1 and Q2 is a NAND gate, and 3 and 4 operate as a NOR gate, and the truth table um, of that being that the output is only high when A and B are low. That's kind of interesting um, because A draws the voltage down to ground, as does B, and together they both draw the voltage down. So only when these two are open is this high in a NOR gate. So that's kind of interesting. And then Q5 being an inverter. So that's what um, that circuit I was showing you. Um, on the breadboard is based on. So let's walk through this and see the behavior. So remember that the light is off in the beginning. Well, why is that? Well, we've got voltage going into the output, in our case, the LED, and the light was off with both switches in the open position. So we've got uh, current coming in here and to ground, which you, you'd think would be on, but also consider that we've had a voltage in coming in here and see that this um, section is all connected with voltage and it's going into the base of Q5, which is um, activating this here. It's, it's drawing this to ground. So it's essentially drawing this voltage here to ground, and then that's why the light's off with both switches in the open position, or off position, if you will. It's because we've got this secondary input here to the voltage, which is closing Q5 and drawing voltage, drawing the current to ground. Let's check out A and B individually. If A is closed, that doesn't really make a difference as far as this to ground here because both of these would have to be closed in order to draw the current to ground from this uh, voltage in. So we also have this secondary um, line here going to Q3, however. So when A is depressed, it does... Um, trigger this base on Q1, but that's not really what's important here. It's this other one that comes down to Q3. Now this is triggering this base on Q3 and closing this transistor, drawing the current to ground on this side. So this is no longer being activated on Q5 because the current's being drawn to ground through Q3. Well, in that case, Notice that the current is free to light up our LED on the output from the voltage in here. So when A is in the closed position, the LED lights. And a similar thing when B is closed. This is doesn't make a difference here for the moment, but notice that this goes into Q4, um, closing this transistor drawing this current here to ground, just like that. And therefore, this is Q5 is now open, and the current is free to flow from the voltage in here, making the LED in the on position, or, or lighted. So either A or B is lighting our LED. Now what happens if we press both A and B? 
That's the difference now between the exclusive OR versus the OR gate, because in an OR gate, that would also light the LED. But if we press both of these, now notice that we're closing Q1 and we're closing Q2. Now this is where this NAND gate comes into play because we're drawing this voltage now down to ground. So it's no longer flowing to the LED here. Well, let's follow through on these leads here as well. We're drawing this voltage down as well because remember this is Q3 and Q4 is a NOR gate. So when we're closing A and B, they're closing three and four, drawing the current to ground and essentially leaving this open so we're not getting any voltage at all, neither here nor there, to the LED, hence closing A and B results in the output being low and our LED light being off. Thanks for watching. Post your comments below if you can lend any insight into maybe something I've mentioned here or something I've missed. Very interested in going deeper learning this stuff and I'm gonna be making a four bit adder very soon here. Um, so please subscribe to my channel and we'll see you guys real soon.